This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad and in this video I'm gonna paint Superman and you can watch that if you like. Make sure to leave a like and a subscription and some words in the little square box for word's sake. Also, check out the sponsors in the description. The model in this video was printed on my new Uniformation GK2. This is one of the new printers that has been released by Uniformation and I'm super excited to get into some details of this machine with you, but that will be in another video. For now, I'm just gonna let you know that this particular machine has its own built-in heater. It also has a 10.3 inch 8K screen, which can is able to print to the micron uh, density of 29.6 microns, which is freaking tiny. Look at these prints. It printed amazing. This printer I'm so excited for, especially coming into the winter. This machine is going to be the standout of all the machines. I'm certain of it. Enough about the machine. Let's have a look at these prints and uh, get continuing with the video. By the way, if you are interested in the machine, I will leave some information about it in the description below. Make sure to check that out, as well as the sponsors of this video, which will also be in the description down below. To start out with this model, I decided that the best course of action was to glue these arms onto the body. Once I had glued them on, it was time to fill in the gaps that I had made in the little suitcase that is on the base. The reason I made these gaps was so that I could print this model piece in the hollow formation, which means that there isn't resin inside of it, meaning I saved a little bit of money on printing this piece and not using a load of resin. I filled up the gaps with resin. Uh, first I used some putty, then I filled it up with resin and cured it, and as you can see, I also filled up the seams on the arms as well. I then primed the model black using a Citadel spray paint, which you can get in my store in Littlehampton, a ground affected studio, look it on Google, uh, and uh, that's what I did, I let it dry, and this is what you're looking at. This video was sponsored by CA3D Studios. If you would like to get this Superman file and many other files that are available every single month, then you need to go and join CA3D Studios over on their Patreon, where you will get a couple of files every single month, and uh, they are of the absolute bestest uh, you could ever get, and amazing characters. I would like for you to go and look at them in the description, so that you can get yourself uh, one of these awesome 3D sculpted files to 3D print on your own 3D printer. And uh, that's a fact. I just want to mention the benefits that you will get from joining to the VRP uh, tier of the CA3D Studio. You not only do you get the six or seven models, but on the second month you get access to the previous two months STLs, on the third month access to the previous three months, fourth month access to the STLs of a month of your choice, and on the fifth month access to all models, and you join a limited group of supporters who will not only choose one of the characters we will make in the month, but will also choose the pose and constant direct contact with the 3D modelers to give direction during the project's progress, and we'll also have access to a premium diorama that we'll be developing in the next few months. You need to join this Patreon if you haven't already because it is totally out of this world. Make sure to check it out in the description down below. In the model, you need to be able to put colors on the model. And uh, this particular model has got a very bright, saturated color in the center of his chest. And the best way to get your colors super saturated is to put white underneath them first. This will make sure that the color you lay over the top has its best chances of being its brightest color it could possibly be. So I went around the model and I gave roughly a zenithal, which is basically white ink sprayed over the top of black to give some shape and volumes to the pieces. I then used a sepia ink in this case for the bag and I just sprayed that over the top giving me free shading like magic. I did the same thing with Talisar Blue over the top of uh, Superman's chest, the blue parts of it. And then in order to create a little bit of shadows that aren't just black, I used some blue ink to spray that in the bottom. I've done many videos on this particular combination of colors. It is magic. If you ever want something to be saturated blue, that is the two colors you need to use, nothing else. Now to work on his suit, I decided that looking at 
the pictures that I found of the Superman on the internet that I wanted to go with that grayish blue suit that he wear. I don't even know. I know nothing about suits. I don't wear a suit. I wear a t-shirt and a short pair of pants. The only time I wear long pants is when it's really cold outside and even then it irritates me. So I don't know anything about clothing and I just decided to paint it kind of like a comic book the way that I know things as which is just comic book things that's easier for my brain to handle for the skin tones I did the same thing I do on most skin tones and I kind of work my way through the fairy flesh uh, skin tone set this is a set from Nocturna which I have noticed is now out of stock online can you guys please stop buying it so that I can keep it in stock in my shop and use it for myself a little bit of a deviation from the norm and this time I painted a transparent red from the bottom of everything this annoyed the crap out of me because it ended up being way too red and I didn't like it. I came back with some highlights over the top with the brighter skin tone which ended up desaturating everything all over again and uh, made me very upset. So to bring that saturation back again I used yellow, very very thin, super thin. Basically I didn't even use yellow, I used water with a slight touch of yellow in it. Over the top of everything, this is called a glaze. I sprayed this glaze on with my airbrush. It's like magic. And now I'm still not satisfied with the skins. I absolutely do not like them. So the secret trick that I have every time I don't like a skin is to take this orcish pink, whatever it is, and uh, just spray it <laughs> into uh, areas. And when you do that, it starts to look like skin again. I don't know why. I just, there we go. End of story. Let's move away from the skins. And let's talk about the base. For the base, I made more mistakes. And the mistakes I made was spraying purple. Was it a mistake? I don't actually know. Because I did leave some of that purple in there. And you can kind of see it. It does mess with uh, the lighting and make it look like it's a little bit deeper in the back. Maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't work. I don't know. But I used blue over the top of that. And then I just incrementally worked my way up with dust colors. Colors that look like concrete, which are just uh, grey, different greys. I put them over the top. Actually looking at it now, you can definitely see that purple in there. Maybe the purple did work. And now it wouldn't be a project uh, of the ground affected top if there wasn't any deck tan in it. And I found a space for the deck tan. That is the dry brush of the edges of this rock thing that he's standing on. So I, I don't know, it's a sidewalk, whatever it is. I also decided that I needed to paint that little uh, sidewalk sewer drain cover thing. What it, yeah, I sprayed that with a little bit of non oil, which was not dark enough. So I came back in with a panel line wash and just put that all over it. That was the base done in my eyes. And it was time to get back onto the sewer. Now that it had fully dried, it was time for me to add a little bit more blue back into the shadows. So I used Drakenhof Nightshade and literally just airbrushed that all over the shadowed areas. Now I would rather not actually talk about what I'd done with these shoes because I kind of regret what I did in a way. I ended up asking someone online, what should I do with the color of these shoes? And that guy is clearly a schmuck because he told me to paint them like this and now they look like either clown shoes or bowling shoes and I'm not sure whether Clark Kent did bowling or clowning but we are in this situation and we're just gonna walk on by as if nothing ever happened this is the thing that I do when I'm making models I build them up from the bottom up I start at the base and I kind of work my way up and I build the model as I'm going this makes it easier for me to see the end in sight even though there are parts strewn across my studio I know that I'm still starting to work on the end of this project. Taking a bit of brass, I painted that over the label thing that is on the bag. I also took some dark silver and painted all the metal pieces that are on that bag too. Going back onto the body, I needed to work on the belt and the belt, I just made it black. Again, like I said, I don't have a fashion sense at all, so to me, black made the most sense. In fact, I've never even seen a belt like this unless it was my dad's belt. And since my name is your dad, I don't even have one of those belts. So, I don't know anything about clothing. Don't take my word for any of this. If you like what mine looks like, paint it like that. If you don't like what it looks like, then you're going to have to use your own fashion sense. While I was talking a load of nonsense, you could see me masking up this logo. This is something I don't normally do. If you've watched any of my videos, you would know that I usually don't like to mask things like this. Mainly just because it just takes up so much time. And really, you could actually mess it up if you pull the mask off. 
uh, even if you maybe just didn't get the paint dried enough underneath to be honest i don't know enough about it to tell you how to do this in the best way i have made a lot of mess doing this in the past however this time was relatively successful actually i didn't really do much of a mess there was one spot that i didn't really get cleaned up properly and i just scraped that off as you could see going back to the portrait it was time to block out the hair on clark's head and i used black for this not not black i just used black to be fair, this black was probably mixed in with a load of colors on the palette anyway, so technically it's not a pure black anymore at this point anyway. While that hair was drying, it was time to go back into the logo on his chest, and I need to paint yellow in here. Now we all know you can't paint yellow over anything other than white, because if you do, you're going to have a very sad time. So I spent my time making sure that there was a perfectly shaped white space on the inside where I was going to put the yellow. And then I just use an ink over the top of that because it doesn't have to be fancy. And also, if you're not very careful with this, the ink won't really show up much on the red. It might a little bit, so do try to be careful. But it does mean you can be a little bit sloppier with putting the yellow in. After painting caterpillars onto Clark Kent's forehead, it was time to paint his t-shirt. His t-shirt is white, but I used deck tan to paint this. Deck tan is a color that covers extremely well, and this was the reason why I chose it for this application uh, on the model. I also used Drakenhof Nightshade to paint some of the buttons that are on this jacket. And after throwing my camera around like a weirdo in my studio looking at the model that I'm painting I decided to try put these pieces together and see how they fitted. It was at that point that I realized I needed to paint the cuffs on the hands as well. And once I had got everything fitting good and proper I glued those hands into place. And it was at this point that I realized that deck tan on its own was not going to be bright enough especially since I'd used white to highlight the shoes the shirt looked like it would never been washed or this guy never owned bleach and I don't know if he did but I'm pretty sure if you have a suit this fancy you're gonna have a white t-shirt so I had to bite the bullet and go back in with white and brush that over all the spots because there was no ways I could mask it at this point as I had built way too much of the model Going back to the project, I decided to add blue into his hair because I like to paint in a very comic style and blue makes the most sense for Superman's hair. And at this point, it's time to put on the stupid glasses to make my eyeballs be able to see Superman's eyeballs. Because for some reason, this Superman has the world's smallest eyeballs that a Superman has ever had. However, it gives him a super stern, strong man look and it looks really cool, but I did need glasses to paint them and uh, maybe you do too. If you're struggling to paint eyes, maybe it's time to buy a really terrible pair of reading glasses just to help you with certain things on your model. There is no shame in it. We are all struggling to do these things. And speaking of struggling, if you struggle to do pupils, then use a pen, a fine liner pen, which will make your life so much easier. Everybody will tease you for not using a brush, but you will know that your eyeballs are nice and round and in the place that you wanted to put them. After you've put the highlight in the eyes and put the model together, you can probably, I would say, call this model done.
Hopefully you've managed to take something out of this video that might help you paint something in the future. And if it did, leave some words in the bottom the square where you told me about how this is going to help you in the future. Of course, it is the time of the video where I want to thank the patrons for even any of this being even possible in the first place. And because without them, there wouldn't be a ground effect in studios and uh, I must say thank you very much for that situation. We got a couple new patrons and I would like to thank them right now. Billy Dobson, Squid JRC, Massimiliano, Monty. Thank you my dudes for your support over on the Patreon. That uh, support that you give helps to keep these videos funded and happening every single week. As well as a sponsor, make sure to check out the sponsor in the description if you like this model or you think they might have something else you might like. Go check them out in the description. It is now time for me to end this video and the only way to end a video that I make is for me to tell you cough. Do you think that one was a little bit too abrupt? Nah.